Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and this is another exclusive look at Windows Phone 7. In this video, we're going to talk about the start screen, the settings, and the camera application. So let's get to it. Now again, we just want to emphasize that what you're about to see is not final hardware or software. It's not a representation of what you're going to be able to get uh, when Windows Phone 7 devices sh start shipping. We're doing this for fun just to give you a sense of what Windows Phone 7 is all about. So let's get started with that. The notification screen actually gives you a lot of useful information. So on the bottom, you get uh, notifications of missed calls, missed SMS, and if you had any, missed email. And it also kind of bounces on the bottom, which is pretty cool because it shows you what's behind. Just a really cool effect, I think. Uh, above that is a notification for your next appointment, followed by the date and the time. And along the top, you just get your system notification, Wi-Fi status, and battery status. So let's slide to unlock, and we reveal the start screen. Now, the premise behind the start screen is to give you ease of access of information and actions, which is a great idea. It's a vertically scrolling list that you can add endlessly to. Uh, you can have a variety of different tiles, as they call it here. So you can have tile notifications for uh, phone and for uh, MMS and SMS and for email, or you could have live tiles. So for example, the people tile in the upper right corner is a live tile. You can actually see information be updated within the tile in real time. So I can just glance up there and see who is updating their status on Facebook. Windows Phone 7 does not integrate uh, with Twitter right now, but again, this is not final release. Maybe it will when it comes out. That would be a nice addition. And there are also other things that you can link to your start screen. You can link uh, website shortcuts. So here I've got a link to mobile.twitter.com, and you can also link your favorite people, which is something that, for example, the iPhone can't do. You can't put a link to your favorite people on your main screen so that within one tap you can dial them out. Very nice feature. Okay, so let me tell you how I have set up my start screen here. And of course, I have no third-party live tiles to work with, but presumably when Windows Phone 7 comes out, there will be a wide variety of live tiles, tiles to show sports scores, to show Twitter status, um, stock status, weather status, all sorts of things. So really, within one glance, you could just look down your start screen and know what is going on without having to dive into applications. Pretty cool concept if it comes to fruition. Okay, so here we've got uh, the phone app, the phone tile showing me that I've one missed call. Here's the people hub, and you've seen that a lot. And from the people hub, I can pin people to my uh, start page, and it jumps back, and now I have a new person down here. So I'm going to take that off. Okay, jumping up to the top, we have uh, an indicator for SMS. We also have a indicator for email. I'm not going to talk about those two things in this video. Down here we have an indicator for calendar, which obviously jumps you into calendar. Now, what is a little bit annoying about how Windows Phone 7 acts right now, and again, this may change, it may not change, is that if you are on the bottom of the list of your start screen and you go into a, an application, when you go back to the start screen with the start button, you are taken to the top of the list, always to the top, not to where you left off. Kind of an annoyance, but not, not too big of a deal. Here I've, I have a link to Internet Explorer, so I can quickly get to the web browser. I've got a link to the Zune application, and it'll show you a little... This is another example of the live tile function. It'll show you a little example of the music that you were listening to previously. So if I tap into here, you can see kind of the music that I was listening to. I don't know exactly what it was, but uh, a nice little feature there. Down here, I've got a link to mobile.twitter.com because there are no third-party apps for Windows Phone 7 available right now. Um, I'm having to use the mobile site for Twitter, which is not too big of a deal. It's very easy to pin websites to your start page. You just expand this upward, you hit pin to start, and bada bing, it is there. I'm going to take that off to keep it clean. Now, I've got a link to the marketplace, which again isn't really... Uh, in use right now because Windows Phone 7 isn't out. Uh, below that, I have a link to the Pictures Hub, and this actually shows you your latest picture uh, that you took with the camera. So I took a picture of some crackers in a bowl, and it just shows you a little preview of that down there. Then we have the camera application. Well, I like to take pictures, and here's the settings, and here are two people that I call on a regular basis, kind of bouncing around and moving around, kind of as if they were alive. So that is how I have my start screen set up. There's a lot of promise to how you can have your start screen arranged once you start integrating third-party tiles, and especially the live tiles that update information in real time. So let's bounce into the camera application, just talk about that, because there's a really cool feature of the camera application. 
Now when you go and take a picture, and let's say we're taking a picture of the Nexus 1 here, um, and by the way, all Windows Phone 7 devices will have the very nice to have camera, manual camera button. When you take a picture, this is not going to be the best picture, watch what happens. It slides over to the left. Now this isn't a new thing where a smartphone operating system will give you a quick way to get back to your picture, but I think this is the easiest way of any smartphone operating system. You simply swipe to the left or swipe to the right and you are taken to the picture you just took. If you want to go back in time, you keep going. And if you go all the way to the right, you're taken back to the live camera view, which is just a really cool way how they integrated uh, the, the camera application with the photos application. And I actually recorded some video over here. This device is capable of recording in 720p, but again, this is prototype hardware, so you shouldn't really judge it on that. So that was a little look at the camera application, and I think it's, uh, here we go. Let me just jump into the settings real quick. And again, this most likely isn't final. In fact, this is LG branded. So it's very possible that this isn't a Windows Phone 7 specific feature. So we can change the photo resolution, hit back button, white balance, color effect, photo quality. I'm sure that some OEMs will be able to customize the, the uh, photo application based on the hardware that's actually taking the pictures. So let's jump back to the start screen. Now let's talk a little bit about notifications because notifications are very, very important. I want to call your attention to the top of the screen here. Very interestingly, the, the network status and Wi-Fi status is not showing up unless you tap and then it pops up. Very interesting and you have to wonder, do you care about seeing um, your, your signal strength all the time or would you rather have a cleaner look and have that information be hidden away as is the case in this particular build of Windows Phone 7. Just something to think about. So what I'm gonna do is send this phone a text message so you can see what it's like when you're working. Let's say you're on the web and suddenly a text message comes through. So, so I'm going to take this other phone here and send a text message. Watch what happens. Okay, there we go, text message. And you get a little preview, which is really awesome. And what you can do is you can ignore it and it will go away, or you can tap and it will bring up the text message. And this is the really cool, simple interface for the text messaging uh, program, so simple. So you can use the on-screen keyboard, of course, and say, hello, how are you? A really, really sweet keyboard, by the way, except from this angle, it's difficult to, to use. And so that's how notifications occur. They occur on the top. And again, this may not be final, but this is just the way that it is now. So what I'm gonna do now is call the phone and you're gonna see what it's like to receive a call on a Windows Phone 7 device. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it off. Okay, and here we're getting a call. And if there is a caller ID associated with this, you'll actually get a big bright background here. And what you can do is slide up to action on it, but that's not enough, you have to determine if you want to answer or ignore it. I'm going to ignore it, and then you're going to see now I have two missed calls here in the notification area, and if I slide up, now the counter has gone up to two. Another thing that's kind of cool, another cool effect, is that the counters actually change uh, after you unlock the screen, not before. So for example, if you haven't turned on your phone for a while, and you unlock the screen and slide the, uh, the unlock screen up, and you have 10 emails. This will go from three to 10 before your eyes. It's just a cool little effect that makes your phone feel kind of uh, alive. I think that's a good, a good metaphor to use. Okay, so finally, let's bounce into settings. Take a look at what you can change in Windows Phone 7 right now. Again, I'm sure the settings will change, but just wanna give you an idea of what it's like right now. So we can do some application specific uh, changes to the settings or we can just go into system. And from system we can go into ringtone and sounds. The metro interface continues and we can change the ringtone so we can tap on a particular area. You get the point. It's never fun to change your, to change your ringtone. Nothing special about that. We can change the theme. So we can have a dark background theme which is perfect for AMOLED displays or we can do light which is good for um, you know, standard LCD displays. And then you can change the color accent to a variety of different things. Let's say blue with a white background. And now if we go back, we have blue with a white background. And notice what I just did. I went back to the start screen and then I hit the back button down here and it took me to the, to the previous screen, kind of stepping me through time, which is quite nice 
the Windows Phone 7 platform may not have a multitasking interface, but you can very easily jump back to applications that you were working in previously. So the back button gets a ton of use in Windows Phone 7. So now that we have a different brighter theme, we can turn on airplane mode. Again, just a simple toggle switch here. We can turn Wi-Fi on or off, Bluetooth on or off, very simple stuff. Email and accounts, you can add a variety of different uh, email protocols, although I'm sure the list will get bigger when you uh, can buy a Windows Phone 7 device, but you can add Exchange, of course, Gmail, Yahoo, uh, Hotmail, you know, the, the usual suspects. We can change the lock screen and wallpaper and the behavior, so the screen timeout until tells, tells the device how long until it shuts off. You can change the wallpaper of the lock screen, and it comes with some pretty fancy wallpaper to start. So let's say we want to have uh, you know, this interesting one set as the wallpaper. We hit the check mark, and it's done. Let's go back. Location turned on, so that will work with Bing Maps Cellular. I'm using this over AT&T right now can change the date and the time. Um, we also have brightness. Right now it's set to automatic. Some people were asking about the brightness uh, during the previous video where we talked about the browser. And I mean, the screen gets pretty bright. Not that it matters. This is the maximum brightness. It's very bright. Not that it matters because this is reference hardware and it's not intended to be a uh, final release. So let's scroll down a little bit more. We have keyboard. You can change the keyboard to another language. Region and language, ease of access. Speech, auto confirmations is turned on. Uh, find my phone which is presumably a feature that they will have enabled uh, so that you can use a web interface to locate your phone, which is always a nice little feature there. Now let's swipe to the right real quick and see if there's anything interesting here. So let's see if there are any game settings. Xbox Live is turned on, although the service isn't active yet. Internet Explorer, this will take you to the same settings that you get if you were to access them from Internet Explorer. Maps, Marketplace, there's not much you can do right now uh, with, with, the, uh, with the settings here for the applications. So we're not going to go too far in search. We'll let you delete history and use your location. So overall, I've been able to customize the start screen on Windows Phone 7 so that it works for me. I can quickly dial the people that I care about, I can see certain updates, and I can jump in and out of applications that I use on a regular basis. Again, the, the promise of Windows Phone 7 is that you will be able to have a lot of third-party live tiles here that really bring information to your fingertips. And I think that if that promise comes to fruition, uh, it'll be a fantastic paradigm, a new paradigm on how we should interact with our devices. So that was another quick look at Windows Phone 7. Please thumbs up this video if you liked it and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Also, if you didn't see the previous video where we compared the browser of Windows Phone 7 to iPhone and Android, you got to check that out. I'll put a link up on the video to get that and uh, thanks for watching. That's it for now.